Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. I'm honored to be connecting with you today here on live stream with Facebook. Today is a Wednesday. I believe it's the 14th day. Uh, well, it couldn't quite be the 14th. That would be tax day. But we're moving up on that pretty fast. And so welcome to today's live stream. Today is going to be the last day in the series on opening the heart and soul. And the topic that I've chosen is Da I, opening your heart to live the greatest love in every moment. So this is a topic that on the surface might seem nice and fluffy and simple, but when we dive into it, we're going to discover that it does require a great deal of awareness to live in a place of Da I, to live in a place of the greatest love in every moment. And so today that will be the core of this discussion. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to connect with everybody today. And this whole uh, series, it's been about what? Uh, this will go, be going into the second week. And the series has actually been very advantageous. There have been a lot of students that have been very grateful for the wisdom. There have been quite a few students that have taken advantage of the crown chakra blessings. Uh, the, one of the popular ones was releasing relationship pain. So that was actually a very popular crown chakra blessing. And another one was for uh, literally opening the heart and soul. And I used that, I, I released that one two days ago and I actually include my open heart and soul calligraphy uh, as part of that crown chakra blessing. So both of those have received rave reviews, so to speak, and they are still open. If there's anyone interested in those, uh, they're only $100, so contact me. So um, we are starting to collect some steam, so welcome to everybody that's joining in. And in preparation for today, uh, today's wisdom and teaching, I was connecting to the calligraphy, the Da I calligraphy, the greatest love calligraphy, uh, as I typically do every day. <clears throat> and I will offer some guidance today from the soul of the greatest love, the soul of Da I. Because everyone and everything has a soul. And that means that every soul has a voice. One of the great, um, wonderful aspects of being a student trained underneath Master Shah is I have learned the ability to connect with the souls of different things and the ability to uh, hear what those those uh, different souls have to say. I, I have to say it's been one of the most rewarding parts of being on this soul journey to comprehend that everything has a soul and to comprehend that the connection to each soul at that level can occur. And so that is one of the things that I will most likely be leading into as we move forward in the next week or two is opening our spiritual channels more. And this would include uh, the application of the, uh, the four major channels and of course the, um, the, the seven chakras or soul houses. There is ways in which by the practices of opening these we can further open our spiritual channels, learn how better to communicate with souls and the soul world for uh, advancement in our soul journey. So there are some great opportunities today to uh, open our heart more and more because truly, as Master Shah has taught us, one of the key features of the ability to see heaven with our third eye, the ability to hear heaven, the ability to be more and more connected to our soul and its intention is an open heart and soul. So any practice that we do towards that end is obviously going to be of great value to us. I want to pause a moment and connect with everybody here that's tuned in here today. <clears throat> Aloha Susan, welcome, welcome Renee, welcome Kristen Rojas, Aloha Susan Birchmore. Uh, as well as Susan Duvendorden. Welcome Ali. Welcome Petra Marie, staying up quite late. Welcome LaRonda, thank you for joining. And welcome Kristen Strachan. Welcome CJ. Welcome Linda Jansen. Welcome Master Avi. Welcome Kate. And Aloha Jennifer. Welcome Rishav. Welcome Anna Marie.
and welcome also to Damien who has just joined us. So at the beginning of the live streams it's just catching a little steam. Uh, we'll um, prepare a little bit before we go into today's teachings. But please if you have not already hit the share button to let other people know about this. So one of the things that's occurred uh, since I have been on this soul journey, which is literally since the age of 18, that's when I believe I have woken up, is the, the recognition that it's not always easy to be in a place of love. And especially if we have life conditions that bring about um, things, conditions, people in our life, whatever it may be, that, that cause our heart to be closed, that cause us to move away from love. Um, there's a big part of it, of course, is our connection or lack thereof with our beloved Creator. And so, as we dwell today into the subject matter of how to maintain the highest love in everyday life, we have to look at what has kept us from doing it, how we can awaken our heart and soul on a daily basis, preferably in the mornings when we wake up, and how to maintain that through the day when various aspects of life tend to whack us upside the head a little bit. From, from everything from the drive to work, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the spouse, and maybe their reaction, which might not be in the greatest loving place, potentially the children, and even our own negative thoughts, words, and actions. Those all have a, a, a possibility of derailing us from being in a place of love. So we're going to discuss that as well today. Before we do, we're going to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. So welcome Damien, welcome Lali, welcome Steve Hightower, and also anybody else whose name I have not seen, welcome. Please uh, join me as we connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Now we have a body position called the Solite Era Hand Position, and it's a body power position where we place our hands much like in a prayer position, drop our left hand in front of the heart center. This connects our heart center to heaven. And we will call in all the beings of light that are always present to service in all time. Dear all beings of light, serving the plan of the light side. And you may close your eyes and call in the beings of light as well. They're all masters and ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, kahunas, angels, healing angels, archangels. They're all Buddhas and bodhisattvas, all my heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. Dear beloved Mother Earth, Father Heaven, stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, we love you, we honor you, we appreciate you, deeply respect you. And we ask most humbly and most sincerely for your presence today. Come to sit in each of our heart centers. Bless us to more fully develop, more fully open our heart center. Bless us to fully align our soul, heart, mind, and body. Bless us to receive the wisdom, the guidance, and the blessings to allow us to maintain sustain an open heart and the greatest love with all of our thoughts, all of our words, all of our actions throughout each and every day moving forward. We ask the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony transmitted to all souls and all universes to please turn on. And we ask the Source Soul Song to please bless this request and to bless all souls in all universes, and we invite all souls to join us. For those that are new watching for the first time, this is a blessing, this song is a blessing, we make a request, close your eyes to receive. Everyone else, let us connect, offer a blessing. Let us begin. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Oh, I was in hurling. Oh, I trun ran lay. Wang li hing rong, her mu shi shong. 
相爱平安和谐，相爱平安和谐。I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. Again, lula lula li, lula lula la li, lula lula li. Lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Oh, I, I, Xian Herling. Oh, I, I, Chun Ran Li. Wang Li Hing Rong, Her Mu Shi Shang. 相爱平安和谐，相爱平安和谐。I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. Ha ha ha! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give me a moment, please. Every time that song is sung, balance is occurring. It has the unique ability to bring to us a state of mind that can move us from wherever we're at that we're not enjoying to where we wish to be. It is a、uh, panacea, if you will, a fix-it song that can be employed in any moment, in any time of the day, when you are not in alignment with love. It is truly one of the greatest gifts that has come to humanity.、Uh, Kristen has posted information on it. If you are new to this, you can find out more at lovepeaceharmony.org. It is the song is available to the world in 50 languages, and it is encouraged for you to share it freely and widely to awaken humanity. So today's subject: how to stay in Da Ai, the greatest love, in every moment in our life. Showing of hands. How many of you are in love every moment of your life? How many hands are going up? Every moment. I'm not. It's very difficult. Why is it so difficult to always stay in a place of love? One of the reasons is because it's not what we were taught. Another reason is because when we came out, we moved from a place of love to a place of not being in love all the time, and it is because of. Not having that wisdom、um, being shown us, not so much told us, because as a child, a child absorbs almost entirely by what they、uh, what they see, what they hear, what they feel, not so much by what they understand conceptually at the level of understanding human words. And for the most part, the、uh, the child does not grasp the human words until age three, four, and five. So, what in this? What are they grasping from the moment of birth? What have you grasped from the moment of birth? We grasp with feelings. We grasp with what we observe. But mostly, it's feelings. Why? Because feelings is the language of the soul. So, if we feel love, then we know it. We can feel it in what what the child may be observing, but the child could observe what looks like love. But if they if it feels like someone is being taken advantage of other, even though it looks like love, then the feeling overrides what is observed. 
So one, one of the great keys of understanding how to be in love is to go into rewind and recognize that we weren't brought up, the vast majority of us anyway, in a series of conditions that have allowed us to hold on to that 24 seven. So how do we get back to that place? How we get back there is by starting with this awareness. Now I'm going to offer a, uh, a flow. I'm going to offer some guidance and some wisdom from the soul of Da I, which is the greatest love. Now a little bit of uh, uh, pre uh, pre information on that before I offer this information, and also I uh, want to acknowledge those that came in just a little while ago. So welcome to uh, Rosenberg. Welcome Emma, Rosa Perez. Welcome Emma. Welcome to uh, Giovanna and welcome Dean. Anybody else I haven't mentioned, please forgive me. <clears throat> so Master Shah offers a teaching of Da I, which means greatest love. Uh, it is Mandarin Chinese. Da is the greatest. I is love. Very simple. One simple word. I. A-I. Da means greatest. I means love. This is from his book, his most recent book, Soul Over Matter, on page 87. Every human being needs love. When you feel love from your parents, when you feel love from your colleagues, when you feel love from your partner, when you feel love from your children, when you feel love from your spiritual fathers or mothers, you are moved and touched. Da I is the number one principle to transform every part of your life. If everyone were to apply love towards each other, then transformation of every part of everyone's life would occur. So to learn this a very basic teaching is simple. To apply it in our life, well, that takes a little bit of practice, okay? So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to, at the second half of this, we're going to do practical efforts that you can apply when your day shows up in front of you and tries to knock you out of love, okay? because this is about how to maintain that in each moment. First, I'm going to offer a flow. Now, Master Shaw has brought to humanity a very special uh, message uh, called Da'ai. This is the calligraphy Da'ai, uh, the most recent one that came in this book, Soul Over Matter. And uh, more so than the calligraphy, the message of Da'ai, the greatest love, has, it has a soul. Everyone Everything has a soul. All this week, you've heard me say that again and again. How do we stay in this place of love when different people, co-workers, life, children, husbands, wives, bills, when all of these things come at us from different directions, how do we stay in this place of love? The first part is recognizing that everything has a soul, and that includes the soul of Da I. So let's ask Da I where and what it has to say to us. Give me a moment to connect. How? This is the soul of the greatest love. I am not separate from your Creator. I am not separate from you. I am the greatest love. I am in all things. There is no part of all creation that I do not touch, that I do not evolve. Everything that has ever been thought, I am in. Every word, every action, I am in. How is it possible that I could be in an action that creates harm? I am from original creator, and original creator is in all things. Therefore, I too 
am in all things. I am there as a soul to always be the reminder of each and every soul that ever has or will exist of its original source. My task as the greatest love, as Da I, is to be the reminder, the slingshot, the boomerang, the rubber band that calls back all souls to their home. This is my service to all souls. It has been said and you have learned that greatest love melts all blockages. How is this true? It is simple. Greatest love carries the greatest, highest, and purest light of all that is. There is nothing that can stand in its illuminescence. Greatest love carries with it all wisdom of all time, ever. Greatest love is original source. And so it is simple to understand that the greatest could melt anything. It is for those that find themselves stuck in the cycles of earth, of the problems of this plane, that fail to recognize my presence when I am always with you. How do you remind yourself of me and attune your heart to me? It is once again simple. It is as simple as thinking greatest love, speaking greatest love, seeing greatest love, acting greatest love. Let me share a little more. I said, if you just think greatest love, it increases your return to me. I said, if you speak the words, da I, or greatest love, the frequency, the light, starts your return to me. The visualization of the greatest love can happen by opening your eyes and seeing God's creation all around you. There is rarely a part of this earth that is not beautiful to look upon, and that one look can be greatest love. You may also envision a great being of light, your creator, your beloved disciples of the creator that have come to humanity. Anything that creates a image of greatest love, in this way, in each moment, you have the opportunity to realign to what is in you. I am the greatest love, and I am always in you, awaiting for you to jump on and ride back with me to your Creator. This is my service to each of you. This is my message to each of you. It simply requires your awareness and your willingness to employ thought, word, visualization, and action to cause me to assist your return to greatest love. It has been my honor to offer you this wisdom. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you to the soul of greatest love. It's always um, enlightening, I guess is a good word, in many ways to hear what these souls have to say. Uh, every soul has a purpose. You know the answer. Every soul's purpose is to serve. 
And this soul, the soul of Da'ai, the greatest love, has explained to us its mission, its purpose, its value, that it is always with us. And that we need only in that moment to find something to trigger us out of wherever we're at. This world we live in right now, currently, is one of the most difficult, I think, uh, in recorded history, especially at this time. And one of the reasons why is because humanity is in a transitional process. We are in a, in a time of, of creation in which we are moving through uh, a part of the universe that carries a higher frequency. We are moving through a elevation of our, literally our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual vehicle. We are becoming lighter beings over the course of time. And if we are, are unable or unwilling to uh, do what it takes to move along with this natural progression, this um, uh, transition, if you will, that's why it's called Mother Earth's transition, because all life transitions back to the heart of the divine. And so in aligning ourselves to the highest that we can, we are limiting or, or we are uh, restricting the amount of suffering that shows up. Uh, I said before, and I'm sure it's true today, that all of us could write one or two novels on the suffering that we've been through in this life. And it seems so much more than our, our neighbor, our friend, or almost anybody else. And yet it's probably equal for all of us. And one of the reasons it feels so intense and so condensed in this time around is because uh, the transition time is here. If you were here 100, 200, 300 years ago, yeah, you'd have been riding on a horse, maybe dodging a few Indians or, 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 or trying to avoid, if you live in urban India, trying to avoid some of the, the takeover from the, uh, in the English. Uh, but everyone back then, they had minimal concerns. They didn't have a television, a cell phone, and everyone and everything else beating down their doors trying to get their attention and doing everything they could to keep their attention from simply doing a simple meditation. Back then, we could sit still and have a meditation. We wouldn't have a lot of things to, to distract us. This world we live in now is literally filled with distractions. The distractions inhibit us from staying in a place of love. The distractions come in a thousand forms from, the, from whatever you're doing at that moment, uh, uh, whether it's cooking or, or answering an email or whatever it is, there could be three or four things that happen that could distract you. Whereas even just 30 years ago, that was not the case. It was just one or two things. Maybe a husband, maybe a child might distract you, but didn't have email back then. So at the very best, they might have distracted you from reading the newspaper for a moment. So now we have uh, tremendous amounts of distraction, all separating us from the greatest love. True statement, they've already documented that the average human's um, uh, attention span is now less than a goldfish. But it says a lot about the incredible uh, brain power that we have. We have the ability to handle so much input, so much data, that we can go from subject to subject to subject in less than eight seconds. A goldfish is nine seconds. And so um, when, we, when we are looking to maintain love in our heart, when we're looking to maintain an open heart, an open soul, when we're looking to bring Da'ai into every moment of life, we have to be aware that this battle has uh, some, it has some significant uh, potential to block us based on the sheer environment that we're working with. This is why I'm so very grateful for my teacher, Master Shah, and the wisdom that he has brought. He brings to us mantra. He brings to us simple teachings, simple wisdoms, and practices that we can employ in living, working, daily life. Since we can't avoid life, life will still come at us at 2,000 miles an hour. We can't necessarily uh, uh, hang it up and go home. We have to bring ourselves to life with the greatest awareness. And that's why I appreciate this master because he doesn't say go sit on a mountaintop and, and chant Om. No, he recognizes that the fastest spiritual growth that can occur is the one where you're working through life. 
not one where you're sitting on a mountain and chanting. You can do that in heaven. It's been made very clear through all great uh, wisdom teachers through all time that the greatest growth of any soul is when they're in the physical experience. Because when they're in the soul world, they're just hanging out, chilling, or hanging out on the cloud, maybe um, talking to an angel or two, maybe meditating, but they're certainly not creating massive, massive growth by addressing the suffering that's in front of them at that moment. The suffering that tends to show up in front of us at any given moment uh, could literally be moving from the cell phone to, uh, to answering the email, to feeding the kid, to going back to answering the email, then being interrupted by a knock on the door, and then being interrupted by the husband's phone call, and the list goes on, which leads us to not answering the, the email, which we needed to because it was supposed to pay a bill, and if we didn't pay that bill, then it could lead to the potential bankruptcy, and the stress layers are layered exactly like that in this world we live in now. So we must uh, recognize that in order to be present, in order to bring da I greatest love to each and every moment, we have to see how the moments get interrupted. If we can see how the moments get interrupted by the sheer busyness this life brings us, we can then apply the wisdom to those moments. We can apply the wisdom either at that moment in time or we can have predestined moments in time where we take care of ourselves. Now you will find that the best way to do this is when you first wake up, starting out in the morning, okay? Because uh, how you set your intention for the day has everything to do with how your day will go. Yesterday we spoke about uh, the necessity, the value, and how we can maintain healthy relationships on a constant basis. And, the, and if you missed that, go back and watch yesterday's live stream. The, the nutshell overview of that is, if we do every day a simple three to five minute connection to all of the souls that are in our field, our, our, our husbands, wives, children's parents, our brothers and sisters, our coworkers, all of those that we interact with in a day-to-day -day relationship, if we call all of their souls, when we wake up in the morning, which given this practice today, I would do that second, but first, uh, uh, so let's imagine this is second um, relationship. You call their souls, you do a forgiveness practice. You ask for and offer forgiveness if you have brought any form of harm or suffering to them in any lifetime. You just do it from your heart. It doesn't have to be long. From your heart is what matters. And then you maybe chant love, peace, and harmony for three, four minutes. And in doing so, you allow yourself to further move into a place of da I and love. Because this is one aspect of it, we're gonna go into what I'm talking about today, this is what I did yesterday. Because you do that part regarding your relationships, that's one extra thing you've done to derail potential blockages that could come at you through the day. How do you maintain da I throughout the day? Start from the beginning. Start by derailing it before it comes. I was in, um, in uh, sales for, for many, many years, and this was going back a ways, but one of the things uh, that I learned was if you want to overcome an objection, then cover it way before it ever comes out. Let's apply that to how to remain in da I, how do we remain into good relationships and love throughout the day. You cover it before it comes out. That day will bring you uh, whatever it's going to bring you. Might be joy, might be trouble, but you're definitely going to get interrupted throughout the day. How you react, how you respond, is dependent upon your heart. How open is it? What did you do to start your day correctly? What did you do to release the blockage or the potential blockages that could come from all those that, that are going to come into your life that day? Your kids will be there, your parents will be there, possibly brothers and sisters, possibly uh, definitely coworkers. Um, you will run across these same people day in, day out. So it makes sense to do a forgiveness practice. Now prior to that, da I, how do we maintain da I in every day? We recognize that, we, that because of the nature of this current existence we live in, of the sheer demand upon our attention that's coming from every possible direction, literally we're getting interrupted 
b just walking out the room, just watching me, you're getting interrupted if you pay attention. You're, you could be being interrupted by, by uh, a text coming through. You could be interrupted by um, taxis, or not taxis, but ambulances going by. Any number of things could, could gather our attention. So in order to maintain this, practice is one of the keys. Master Shah teaches us a really, 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 really important secret. Keep your mind on your Mingmen point. What is the Mingmen point? And what does that have to do with maintaining love in Da Ai? If we keep our mind on the Mingmen point, we are not getting jerked out this way, jerked out that way, jerked out this way. Even if something happens, because we chose to maintain our focus on the Ming Men point, we don't get yanked so far. The soul of the greatest love came, and it said, I am like the rubber band that brings you back home to your source. I am like the boomerang that catches you and brings you back to your source. It is my service to always remind you of your source. Having our mind in our Ming Men point, which I'll explain to anybody new in just a moment, is very much like saying, this is my core. This is where my thoughts will always start from and always end at. This is where my breath will begin from and where my breath will end at. This is my beginning, my middle, and my end in all time. You'll discover that this sacred, this is a very sacred secret delivered by a very high level being to assist humanity to stay in the point that is connected to heaven and earth. The Ming Men point is called the Tao point. It is the point where heaven and earth connect. What does that mean? That means the least amount of karma is there. That means the least amount of mind blockage and mind clutter is there. That means you're in the greatest point of love when your mind is kept there. Now, even in the teaching of this, I have difficulty staying in my Ming Men point. My teacher, Master Shah, has been teaching this for at least four years now, probably longer. And I would guesstimate I'm there about 20 to 25% of the time. So it is not something that, uh, that is a one time off. But I can tell you that by putting your mind there, and we're going to practice this whole live stream, um, you can truly change your life. Now, where is it at? Touch your belly button with your finger. And draw an invisible line straight back all the way to your back where that dip in your back is. That is your Ming Men acupuncture point. That is the Ming Men point. You'll notice that the Kundalini is down below that. There is interconnection with all of the energy centers, the sacred points. This one is a sacred point that has been released to humanity because, we, as I indicated, we're going through transitional times. We're moving more towards the light. Our body, our karma, everything is coming up to be purified and cleansed. That's why it feels like it's such a difficult life. If it hasn't been difficult for you, God bless you. You're one of the ones that has dealt with this before and doesn't have a whole lot of karma to deal with. Um, you've got good karma if your life is nice and smooth. But the vast majority of us that are on this spiritual journey are getting our head knocked around pretty hard. So we need this kind of deep spiritual wisdom that great beings like Master Shah has brought to us. He teaches us how to clear blockages in our soul houses. He teaches us this great wisdom like the Ming Men point. So keeping your mind there is what your task is, not just today, this whole life. Keep your mind there when you're talking to people. Keep your mind there when you're listening to this. Keep your mind there when you're chanting love, peace, and harmony. Keep your mind there when you're cooking. Keep your mind there when you're driving. You will find that you can bilocate your thinking. You can be driving and still have your mind there. You can be cooking and still have your mind there. You can be chanting and still have your mind there. It is possible. And each time you boomerang yourself back to this mind point, you will discover that you will have less reaction. You will have less toxicity coming at you. You will discover that you can focus on what you are doing, that you need to complete that task without getting jerked away every eight seconds. You will discover that this is a great, great sacred secret that will assist us to stay where we need to be.
Now I can teach you dot I and I will teach you dot I how to maintain dot I. But we need an anchor point so that we have something to to access that da I greatest love from. The the Tao point, the point where heaven and earth meet between the uh, Kundalini and the heart. You have seen the yin yang symbol, right? You know it's like two fish with eyes, one, one eye in each point. One of the eyes is the heaven point, the other eye is the uh, um, uh, earth point. One is heaven, one is earth. There is earth in heaven, there is heaven in earth. That's why there is the, the white and the black and the black and the white. Heaven is in earth, earth is in heaven. Where they meet in the middle is the Ming Men point. That is the Tao point, the connection between. You've also heard it called uh, uh, fire and water point. The, the heart is the fire element. Uh, the area down here at the Mingman point is the water area. So fire and water, where they connect. So there's so many deep, 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 deep spiritual teachings on this. You're just going to have to take it at the, at the surface for, for what it is. But know that by keeping your mind in this point, you can dramatically enhance your ability to stay in a place of open heart and open love. So you want to start by opening your eyes in the morning. Before you go into the patterns, before you go into jerking yourself out of bed from the alarm going off, uh, uh, going to do whatever you first do, whether it's feed the cat or feed the kid, whatever it is your typical pattern, it needs to be interrupted by this first. Okay, The first thing you should do upon awakening, opening your eyes, is connect with gratitude. It is the gratitude that starts your heart to open. When you awaken, when you open your eyes, thank you, God. What are you saying thank you for? Are you alive? That's one thing. Are you breathing? That's another. Are you sleeping in a place with a roof over your head versus on the street down below like some of the people you walk by on the way to work? That's another. Do you have food in your refrigerator? That's another. And so forth. Thank you for my husband, my wife, my children. Spend several minutes in gratitude. And more importantly, stretch yourself. If you repeat the same thing every day, you'll be numb. The gratitude will not carry truly depth in it. So find different things to be grateful for. Thank you for the ability to open my eyes to see. Thank you for this vision that has allowed me to be able to see the incredible colors of a beautiful flower, the incredible blessings that a rainbow offers. There are so many different things that we can be grateful for when we open our eyes. So we start with gratitude. The second step is a forgiveness practice. This is when we can employ yesterday's wisdom and teachings for maintaining healthy relationships. But we can expand this to all souls as well. So how would we do that? We do our gratitude and then we say, dear the souls of, and you list everyone that, that, that you know is in your field, all those that you have relationships with. And you could, uh, you know, after you do it for a couple times, you could say all those that I've invited each and every time to come. But list your mother, list your father by name, list your brother and your sister by name, list your children by name. Why? Because you want their souls to come and you want their souls to pay attention and be present to do this uh, morning practice with you. And in inviting their souls, they are now present and they will listen when you do the next step, which is your forgiveness. Remember to invite the souls of all those you will come in contact with, the co-workers, all those potentially on the street that you could walk by. Why would you invite those on the street that you would walk by? What if one of them is going to rob you? What if one of them trips you accidentally and you hurt your knee? Maybe they didn't do it on purpose, but maybe the karma caused them to trip, which caused you to trip, which hurt your knee. And that could take you out of work. That's karma. How do you address that in advance instead of complaining about it at the end of the day? You address it 
in the morning with gratitude. They are all the souls of everyone I will come in contact with today. Visually, walking by, on the telephone, via texting, via email, all of my coworkers, my boss, uh, my husband, my wife, list them all. I love you. Could you please come? I wish to sincerely, sincerely offer my deepest gratitude for all that you do to help make my life brighter. Please forgive me if I have complained, if I have judged you, if I have done anything to harm you physically, if I have done anything to bring emotional suffering to you, if I have caused you to have mental sufferings, if I have harmed you in any way, known or unknown in any lifetime, I truly, sincerely apologize. Now, how long did it take me to do that one part? I led up to it, but to call them and to do that part of the forgiveness, maybe a minute. I wish to offer all of you my love and my unconditional forgiveness. Please forgive me if I've ever held grudges against you, if I've ever done anything to harm you. Please forgive me if I've done any of these things to you. If you have done any of these things to me, if you put me down, you've judged me, you criticized me, you told mom and dad on me, you did this, you did that. If you uh, uh, lied to the boss and you got elevated and I didn't, whatever occurred, I forgive you. I release you of your karmic debt to me. Now, why would you do that? Why would you forgive somebody that pooped on you and you got the, the not so good job and they got elevated? Why would you do that to someone that that may have physically harmed you and caused great suffering in your life, why would you offer them forgiveness? Because that's how you open your heart. That's how you maintain peace and love and the I. If you hold on to grudge, if you hold on to self-righteousness, you don't recognize the nature of karma. You don't recognize that potentially you could have brought that suffering to them. That's why it came into your life. So you do this in the morning when you awaken. You offer this uh, this process and you ask for forgiveness and you offer forgiveness last thing that you do take just two or three minutes and visualize yourself in being smiling happy and joyful through the day see yourself smiling to your boss see yourself smiling to your co-workers see yourself driving to work with a smile on your face see yourself chanting Love, peace, and harmony, if that's what you want to see yourself doing. See yourself being patient with the children. See yourself uh, um, being people coming to you and saying, Wow, I don't know what you've done, but I really like it. Did you change your hair? Did you get new clothes? What did you do? People will notice this because your aura will shift, because your heart will be open, because you will be offering da I, greatest love. It costs nothing to smile. Why don't we smile? Why don't we do these things? I don't all the time. Why? Because we are stuck up here. If our mind is in our Ming Man point throughout the day and we set our day up correctly, we could literally have some significant shift in our life in a very, very short period of time. Now, the opportunity to maintain this is also necess necessary. You want to agree at the soul level, at the conscious level, at the I'm going to do it level for at least 21 days. Because if you agree to do that for 21 days, I am going to do everything to put my mind on my Ming Man point. You know what I did? I set my phone alarm to go off every hour. It goes off. Ah, oh, my mind's not on my Ming Man point. Okay, I put it back there. Um, there are different triggers that you can have. Uh, every time you see a certain color, every time you see the color red, mind on Ming Men point. Every time I see the color, you know, whatever your favorite color is, mind on Ming Men point. When you bring yourself back there, what are you doing? You're training your brain as to who is the boss. You're disallowing the, the 20 different things that come at you 10 times an hour to not knock you off your horse. You're training yourself to be present and in the moment. You are training yourself to remain in the I, the greatest love. When you bring your mind back to your Ming Men point, why not smile at the same time? You know, like a Cheshire smile. Ha! There it is. I forgot. Ha! 
you know, you trigger yourself to smile and put your mind in your Ming Min point. Share the smile. Why not? That's going to bring more love back to you. These simple steps, awakening, uh, being in a place of gratitude upon awakening, calling forth all of the souls that you will have any form of communication with. It's no longer just face to face. It's verbal, it's text, it's emails, all forms of communication, walking by people, call them all. Do your forgiveness with all of them. Ask for, offer forgiveness. And then visualize your day. Visualize it, not unless you know that you have a project or something you have to accomplish that day, then go ahead, visualize the best possible results. But if you're not quite sure, if it's just the basic boring job you're going to, visualize happy people, happy coworkers, happy boss, happy lunchtime. Visualize if, if you have a, a, a digestional issues, happy stomach, happy digestional issues. Whatever it is in the past that has bogged you down, visualize things changing now what happens if you're in the middle of the day and you've done your job you've kept your mind somewhat on the Ming Min point you've kept your love peace harmony song chanting at your cubicle or when you're driving to work and maybe you're chanting a little bit and one of the people around you decides to do something to irritate you because they live to irritate you right they go out of their way to irritate you that's the purpose of other people's lives is to irritate you right no their purpose is to serve. Every soul's purpose is to serve. They are simply giving us an opportunity to stay in love a little bit more. They're giving us the opportunity to be in our Ming Min point, to chant love, peace, and harmony, to give them a smile, and to not let them knock us off of our soul journey, of our plan. We have to be responsible for our heart for our well-being, for our openness of our heart and well-being. If we are not responsible, no one else is going to. Who do you think wins when we let everyone knock us around? We get that rogue email, that bad boss, that whatever, that, that bad driver. Who wins? We have to be the responsible one, okay? So, let's do a practice. Let's employ the greatest love and da I and do an actual practice. So for everyone new that has joined in, thank you for joining. And if you missed the first part, highly recommend you watch it. It'll help the second part make a lot more sense. <clears throat> so let's imagine we're just waking up, okay? I'm going to go through gratitude practice, but I'm going to give you a full minute to do it on your own first. So I'm going to set it up, but you guys got to think of some creative things on your own to be grateful for, okay? So everybody, let's wake up. <sighs> Lying in your bed. Okay. You rest your hands. Maybe put one hand on your heart because you're lying in your bed, right? Talk to God. You believe in God? Talk to God. You believe in Buddha? Talk to Buddha. Whoever you believe in, talk to them. Dear the divine, dear God, dear Buddha, dear Jesus, you state who you want. I love you. I am so very, very grateful. Start telling him what you're grateful for. I'm just going to be here doing my own silently. Are you still being grateful or did you run out of things to be grateful for? Keep going. What else can you be grateful for? See, there's a lot of things you can be grateful for. Many things. So now we call all the souls. Call them by name. They're the soul of. State their names. 
please come. Dear the soul love, please come. Continue to state the names of those people that are most important in your life that you have ongoing relationships with. I want you to state their names because their soul will respond very rapidly. Their soul will come. 30 more seconds. Remember, you're still lying in your bed. You still have your hand in your heart. Okay. Okay. There are all the souls that I will communicate with today, including the souls that I communicate by email, by texting, anyone that I pass wherever I go to today. All the souls that I will have any form of communication with today, please come. So now your room is actually quite full. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of souls are present. So now follow this forgiveness. Dear all of these beautiful souls, I love you. I truly appreciate you. Please forgive me if I have. Please forgive me if I have harmed you. If I have spoken negatively about you, judged you criticized you, looked at you in such a way that carried judgment or criticism. If I have harmed you physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, please forgive me. I love you. I'm very sorry if I have harmed you in any way. If you have harmed me by thoughts, by words or by actions, I sincerely, sincerely apologize. I deeply apologize for anything that you have done to me and I ask for your forgiveness for anything that I have done to you. I release you fully and completely of any harm or suffering you may have caused upon me because I wish to have an open heart. I wish to move forward in love in every moment of my life. I wish to release you of any spiritual debt you have to me that we can all move forward in love, peace, and harmony. Now, you're still in your bed. You're still completing this process. We're about three or four minutes in. Now visualize what your day will look like. See yourself smiling to various co-workers or bosses. See yourself being joyful, joyful with whatever you're doing. It could be daily tasks. It could be uh, cooking. It could be cleaning. It could be fixing the car. Whatever that daily task is, see yourself doing it with joy. See yourself with your mind in your Ming Men point. Is your mind in your Ming Men point now? See yourself smiling and laughing at yourself as you remember to keep your mind in your Ming Men point. Go down the street, smiling at people. Visualize a successful, joyful day, a trouble-free day, a day that is filled with Da I, greatest love. If you've had relationship blockages where the spouse or the significant other has been unpleasant to communicate with, see pleasant communication. You've already done forgiveness with their soul. Go ahead and visualize better results. Do this from your Ming Men point. If the kids have been arguing a lot, see them communicating well with each other. Whatever it is typical for you, visualize a positive outcome. Now we've expended about five minutes in your bed, just waking up in the morning through this simple process, and we wrap it up by asking for a blessing by all the beings of light and the song of love, peace, and harmony. So you do it like this. Dear God, dear all the beings of light, Jesus, Buddha, whoever you call forth, I love you. Can you please bless today to help me to stay in the I, greatest love? 
bless this day so that I focus on my Ming Men point, so that I smile, so that I bring my love to others in the highest and best way. As I chant love, peace, and harmony, please help me to clear the blockages so that my day is smooth and bless me to remember to chant love, peace, and harmony throughout the day. And then let us chant. Lu la lu la li Lu la lu la la li Lu la lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la O ai wo xin now, you don't know Chinese. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Again. Lu la lu la li. Lu la lu la la li. Is your mind in your Mingmen point? Lu la lu la li lu la. Lu la li lu la. Lu la li lu la. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Now, play with me. You could have fun with this. Visualize all the souls singing with you, maybe even dancing with you. Lu la, lu la li. Lu la, lu la la li. Lu la, lu la li. Lu la, lu la li. Lu la, lu la li. Lu la. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you feel? Were well, you able to keep your mind in your Ming Men point? Do you feel more release from the day or preparation for the day? This is a practice, a 21-day practice. I am making a commitment to myself to start my practice today because although I know the wisdom, I am not consistent. So if you're committed, put your name on the board. I'm willing to do this for the next 21 days. Wake up. Offer gratitude. Do forgiveness with all the souls. And then visualize the day. Choosing to stay, stay in the Mingmen point as much as possible. If you're in, I want you to choose a color. Every time you see the color, you have to put your mind in the Mingmen point. The color gold, for example. Or the color purple, for example. Whenever you see the color purple, your mind has to go in the Ming Men point. Make an agreement to set your phone uh, to go off every hour to remind you. If you don't have one of those, download an app. You can download apps that do that. And these are different ways, different examples in which you can say, I am going to put my mind in my Ming Men point. I'm going to keep my heart open. I'm going to smile and bring the best part of me through the day. Because in essence, what you're truly doing is you're manifesting a much better future. It is when we do not do these kinds of things that we manifest more of what we're not wanting. Okay? Understand that we are little manifestors. We all have the ability to bring a far better life to us. And it begins by staying in the I. 
right? Remember, love, peace, and harmony is our greatest tool. If you get nailed through the middle of the day, just bring your mind back to your Mingman point, put on that smile, dear the soul song of love, peace, and harmony, please bless me to transform this current blockage that popped up for me and put me back on track to stay in love, to stay in da I. Great, I love it. I see people choosing yes, I am in, I'm choosing this color. Uh, good. We all have that favorite color, and it's not always something that we see. We have to remember to look for it. Part of your visualization is, is seeing yourself going, ah, there's the color, smiling again. Okay? Think of other ways to trigger you. Uh, it might not, maybe, maybe for some of us, we need something that's not visual. Maybe for some of us, we need something that's auditory. It could be where we need to hear a certain word, uh, uh, the word I, or the word love, or, or it could be something where um, we, ha we touch ourselves a lot. Some people, they touch the ear a lot. You see me touch my nose a lot because of ditches. Choose something for you that you know is a trigger, something that is, comes up a lot in your life, and you can use that as a trigger to put your mind back in your Ming Men point. Okay? I'm going to add to my repertoire, every time I touch my nose, I got to go to my Ming Men point. Okay? So I'm very grateful for each and every one of you that have, are willing to, to move towards this. I know it's hard to make that kind of a commitment, not easy at all, but if you recognize that we're all manifestors, that we're all responsible for what's in front of us each and every day, then this will give us a great deal more control over it and at the same time keep us from going down that negativity road, that woe is me road, that victim road, all of the things that close our heart and soul. All right. So let me offer each of you a blessing. I just knocked over my bottle of water, so I just got a massive financial blessing. Thank you, thank you, heaven. That was so awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> and so let me offer you each a blessing for maintaining da I in all of your waking hours as appropriate for each one uh, uh, watching, each one listening, this blessing, whenever they listen to this, this blessing is for three minutes. Blessing begin. I love you, I love you, I love all of you, I love you, I love you, da Greatest love, die, greatest love, die, die, greatest love, melts all blockages, melts all blockages, die, melts all blockages, greatest love. Greatest love, greatest love, I love you, I love all of you. Open your heart and soul, open your heart and soul, I love I love you. Hey, la 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 la. I love you. 
ha 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 thank you thank you thank you you are all very very blessed so thank you for coming thank you for subscribing at the end of the webcast uh, subscribe button thank you for sharing thank you for following me on Facebook thank you for following and subscribing on my podcasts thank you for um, those who have taken advantage of the crown chakra blessings for those that would like a crown chakra blessing for releasing relationship pain or opening your heart and soul please contact me through Facebook Messenger through my uh, email a soul at yahoo.com or my phone number emails at the bottom of the first page on my website a soul thank you divine Tao and source all beings of light who have come to offer their services at this time thank you to the soul of dot I the greatest love for its great wisdom and sharing today love you all honor you all appreciate you all countless bow downs respect to the return I will see you all tomorrow and all of you that want to join the 21-day challenge, it starts now. Bye-bye, everybody.